Happy to be here, and uh, this story is going to be a little bit about OPower and a little about something personal that we all have in common. So uh, I'm going to start by asking you all to, to just think back to five years ago, okay? So we were in the middle of a historic presidential election. T-Pain was at the height of his musical powers. <laughs> Clean tech investment hit record levels. By show of hands, how many of you had heard of OPower five years ago? few hands. It's, it's okay. I hadn't either, actually. I was toiling away at another software startup down the dullest toll road in northern Virginia. The thing was, I didn't have any purpose in what I was doing. But I wanted to change that. And that's actually what led me to OPower. I've been with OPower for almost four years now. I was here last year to accept the Company of the Year Award with the, with the team. I remember I was sitting at one of those tables thinking about how important the choices are that we make. The best choices come down to choosing to work with the people you want to. And that's most likely to happen when you're working on something that you care about. Around the time I joined OPower, I was a new dad. These are my kids, Ian and Ada, starting kindergarten a few weeks ago. They're five years old. When you have kids, you start to think differently about what you're working for. This is not one of my children. This is Dan Yates, OPower's co-founder and CEO. So I remember the first time I met Dan. If you've ever met Dan before, you remember probably feeling like you're in the presence of somebody who was going to change the world and also somebody who cut straight to the chase. We sat down in a rundown office, secondhand table and chairs. Right off the bat, Dan asked me how much revenue my employer was making and how fast we were growing. So I was a little bit taken aback, but I told him we were about twice the size of O-Power at the time. It took him a second to do some math in his head, and he said, that's great. So we'll be bigger than you guys in about nine months. He's humble, too. <laughs> so, so I walked out of his office. My mind was reeling. Who does this guy think he is? But as I looked around the workspace, I realized that the people I'd met that day at OPower were among the most talented people I'd ever met. It couldn't be an accident that had brought them all together there. There had to be something different happening. So I joined. Now we know something different was happening at OPower. By the end of this year, we'll be 500 people working on three different continents. Every week, we meet with utility CEOs across the world, and we talk to them about how to unlock the potential and the greatest renewable energy resource there is. People. We help people save energy. We help people reduce their impact on the environment. That's something I know everybody here is passionate about. You see, there are many different kinds of companies represented in this room, but one thing that we have in common is a shared passion for the environment. And it's my experience that nothing can bring people together like pride and purpose can. So this is OPower's mission statement. I walk past this sign on the wall. Every day I go into work. And I remember my first day at OPower. I'd been hired to scale a big part of the business. I was growing my team about 400% in the first year. And the emails I got were what you would expect. Headcount and budget proposals, an RFP for a big utility deal. I think there was a financial presentation for a board meeting. But I also got a 1,000-page PDF attachment with home energy reports that I was expected to proofread before they went to customers. Because for companies like ours, it really doesn't matter what's written on your business card. When you're in a mission-driven business, nobody is above any kind of work. It's this attitude that has helped fuel our growth in the US and increasingly overseas. While a year ago, a meeting of our international team would have been myself and a few colleagues having drinks at an airport lounge, today we're 30 people in London and Singapore. And we've been able to overcome challenges to international growth because we've hired experts in many different countries around the world. And every time we hire them, we look for mission-driven people. Every hire we make is roughly a million dollar investment. And we want to invest in people who are committed to our mission of helping others save energy. Mission-driven people are not cookie-cutter. But we do speak a common language at OPower. For example, we love to compete. It brings out the best in people. Whether we're talking about our energy savings competitions, our ping-pong tournaments, or even uh, this fencing match that we staged in the lobby, and I'm pretty sure we're the only tech company to do that. It's true, we also we have a bold legal team. When we celebrate, we do it with passion and humor, like at this launch for Energy Australia. 
And when we represent OPower at, at new markets, like at Metering Europe last year, our mission doesn't need any translation. So like every company in this room, we're building a business of like-minded individuals. We're working toward a mission, and we're building lasting friendships along the way. And I'm proud to say that as of last week, OPower saved its 3 billionth kilowatt hour. To put that into perspective, that means that for every individual employee at OPower, we took more homes off the grid than there are people in this room. And I look forward to being able to say the same thing next year as this community grows, but so does OPower's impact. Thanks.